Well, welcome to our classic car and a quick look at a few more jobs that have been undertaken on the 1972 Volvo 164E. Now you'll be pleased to note that the horrible plastic number plate is no more. This was on there and looked frankly horrible. So that is no more and instead we have this lovely reflective period metal number plate with the separate letters all ready to go on. And this is much more in keeping for a car of the early 1970s such as this. 1972 Volvo 164E and that will go on there and that will look a whole lot better than this horrible bit of plastic which is frankly awful so I just need to drill that up I'll have a look at that a little bit later and get that put on there and then do the back one as well so that's all very good and what else am I been up to Let's put this somewhere safe. I drained off, the other evening I drained off the uh, radiator and the cooling system because I wasn't quite sure how old the antifreeze was that was in there. It actually looks quite clean inside if we peer inside where the thermostat goes. It doesn't look too bad in there at all. It's not all rusty, red rusty, etc. This is the thermostat housing that came off. Needs a bit of a clean but I should have got a hold of another thermostat before I did this, but I'm not that organised. So all I'm going to do is test this thermostat to see if it still works okay. If it still works okay, it can go back in for now. I'm not too concerned. Uh, hoses look alright. These are still nice and pliable. They've not gone all rock hard or anything. Because like I say, the car was in use only two or three years ago. So it's not, hopefully, it's not going to need a full recommissioning. It's more a case of just a fettle on the service. And check it all out a bit. What do you want? What do you want? Hmm? So, yes, so I think the next thing to do is check this thermostat out, get a pan of nice hot water, and just see if this opens and closes as it should do. If it does, it can go back in. If it doesn't, I'll have to go and order another one, and that's going to delay things a little bit. But let's go and sort this out first. Anyone who's been around the channel a little while will remember I did something similar. I think it was on the old Tolbert. And that test went well, so hopefully this will work as well. So we'll just dunk it in the hot water. I brought it up pretty warm. Let's just see if she opens up. And especially being quite a big engine as well, I mean it's three litres. You want the cooling system to be pretty much as tip top as it can be. So let's just wait and see if this opens up. Well, it appears to be opening. Obviously this test without a thermometer doesn't confirm at what temperature it does open but at least it proves the theory that it will open or close and this appears to be opening I'm not quite sure how far open it should go but it seems to be on its way it appears to be opening you don't see this on ready steady cook just brought it back inside and I'm just bringing it back up to the boil again now just to make sure it fully opens and fully closes yeah, it seems to be opening up you can just see that gap there is where the coolant will pass through when the thermostat's in the car. I think while we're at it we'll give the thermostat housing a bit of a freshen up too. It's not looking at its prettiest. Right, so I've given that a quick clean up but evidently it's not in the freshest of condition. <clears throat> it started to rot away here. It's only aluminium. It started to rot away there and it's sort of getting a bit delicate here as well. So I'll get another one of these ordered up. I'll use it for now because it'll still hold water but they're not very expensive so I'll get one of these and a new thermostat while I'm at it. So it can go back together for the time being but I will get another one of these. It's not a big job to change. It's only two bolts so yeah, nice and easy. So that's one of the good things about these Volvos is the parts availability is still pretty good with suppliers here and across Europe and in the USA. So between them all, you can usually get most things that you need. These are available new, so it's not worth messing around with one that's anything less than perfect, really. So that's quite encouraging. Just 
tucked away in the garage here with the Anglia for company. So let's put all this back together. Like I say, thermostat works, but it's probably getting on a bit, so I might as well get a new one in. And then this can be a spare, just to chuck it in the box in the boot, just in case I ever need it. But yeah, we'll get a new one ordered. But for now, let's get these bolts cleaned up, put a spot of uh, copperies on them, reassemble it all, top hose back on, and then we can mix up from some fresh antifreeze, the stuff that was in. Doesn't look too bad actually, but I don't know what age it is. I've put it up here simply to keep it out of the dog's way because dogs and antifreeze, especially on a hot day when they're a bit thirsty, isn't a good combination. So uh, put it well up out of her way and I'll go and find a container to pour it into in a moment. So let's get this back together first. Well, let's go and give the Jubilee clips off the top hose a quick clean up down here. Now one of the clips I've actually replaced because it was not particularly good. So here we are, so I've got the hose here, got the clips here, so I'll just give those a quick clean up, make sure they're fully free, lubricated, then they can go back on. This is the one I replaced, I don't know if you can make it out, but it's a nice proper Jubilee. Another this no-name modern rubbish here. Just need to give it a quick clean up and that'll do the trick just perfectly. Someone asked me if I've got some footage of the LPG tank installation in the boot, so I'll dig that out. I did do a little bit of footage the other day, but forgot to include it in the, the initial review reveal video. Well, that's the top hose back on, that'll do for now. So, let's have a look at these plates and see what we need to do to get them on. In regard to the spacing of the holes, there is a fair bit of give. There's quite a long slot on the bumper itself for the mounting of this one. So this one I'm going to drill first, because this one I've got a lot of space to play with. But over here, it's probably have to, going to have to go somewhere around about here. And someone has actually drilled an extra hole in the bumper just for these purposes to avoid going through one of the actual letters because these are plastic and you don't want to be drilling through those so I'll do this one first because we've got a lot of give and sideways movement on that one and then I'll mark this one up and drill this one afterwards it's always slightly nerve-wracking doing this kind of job okay there we go before <laughs> and after much much better okay well before I do anything else I am going to do that rare thing and tidy up a bit right well I've mixed up a 30% antifreeze mix so we can have a look at adding that in normally you just top up via the expansion bottle here um, but as I drain the whole lot off via the bottom hose I need to take this cap off as well, which you wouldn't normally use. Um, yeah, I'm going to fill up via here first to get the radiator nice and full because it's this side of the thermostat, so I need to do that. Um, and then just run it up with the heater on full. The front of the car is slightly raised up, it's up on stands, so that'll help with the bleeding. And then we'll just see how we get on. Right, well we're up and running now so I'll just let it warm through, monitor the fluid level in here and also over there and just keep an eye on things, heater is on so when it fully warms up the thermostat opens and everything it should uh, flow all the way through the heating circuit and hopefully it will bleed up without too many problems so I'll just need to let it warm up now and see, see how we go. Right, so I've had it running for a little while, I've had it up to temperature, and it has a leak from the thermostat here. Um, I refitted everything, and on the thermostat there is a rubber ceiling ring, and it obviously wasn't too happy at being reused again. 
and it appears to leak so I was planning on getting another thermostat housing anyway as I've mentioned before so I'll order one of those I'll get a new thermostat and I'll get a new rubber ceiling ring that I can fit it all back on and hopefully fit and forget and move on to the next job so uh, that's probably the end of play for today but onwards and upwards and back soon so as I can't do any more on the cooling system right now I think I'll have a look at changing this rear number plate get this horrible plastic one off and away there we have the rear panel I literally just have two holes, there's no sliding hole there's no horizontal elongated hole to play with so this is going to have to be drilled super accurately and I just hope that the holes in the car are suitable to line up with the new and rear number plate because I don't want to have to try and well you can't drill through one of the raised plastic letters so I may even have to re-drill the back panel if these holes aren't going to work but I'd rather not do that if I can avoid it but let's see let's see what turns up I won't be sorry to see the back of these horrible plastic things that's for sure right if I was going to reuse the holes on the car that this plastic plate was affixed with um, I would have to drill this here right under there and somewhere over here and basically it would have all looked offset to have one screw head there and the other somewhere over here would have just looked terrible it would have just been totally out of balance at all so i'm going to have to redrill the car so i'm just i've marked out the same position on this side as to that side and drill the pilot hole and worked out the midpoint here and then we'll actually go to the car once i've finished drilling these out i'll find the midpoint on the car probably using the where are we? Using the number plate light here. So I'll find the midpoint of this. And I'll mark that with a piece of tape underneath here, presumably. The midpoint here. And then I'll line the midpoint that I've measured on the number plate on here. And then I'll be able to work out where I need to re-drill into here. And I'll have to probably bung these original holes up with something else. But it would have just looked really odd if I tried to reuse these holes with the new plates it just wouldn't have worked properly at all fortunately I can get to the inside of the back panel that way so it's all quite nice and easy so I'll go and carry on drilling out the holes in the new number plate then put it onto the car position it and then mark through these holes onto the car where I need to drill the new mounting holes so that's all quite exciting so I'll switch the camera off so I can think straight and uh, more very soon well this is the time that you find that half of your drill bits are blunt but we got there in the end after a great deal of measuring marking out and careful careful drilling we have a new ring number plate i have to say that looks marvelous i hope you'll agree I just need to clean up a little bit around here there's still a few dirty marks but these raised letter plates, metal reflective plates for an early 70s car, including this 164, I think it just looks fantastic. So I'm really, really pleased with how that came out. A shout out to tippers, no financial uh, involvement other than just a happy customer. Um, so many thanks to tippers for turning the order around so quickly. And I have to say, that just looks superb compared to the, the plastic thing, which I'm not sure where that, where that even is now. I can't see that anywhere, but I won't miss it. So that's another level of job done. So proper plates front and rear. All I need to do now is wait for the thermostat and the thermostat housing to arrive in the post, hopefully next week. So I think I'll probably wrap up this video for now. Um, just another, like I say, another quick update on the Volvo 164. Uh, once I've done the thermostat and the housing, I'll wheel it outside again, run it up and just see how well she runs once fully warmed up. Um, obviously you never really know until you take it down the road, but you know so far the signs look reasonably encouraging so thanks very much for watching this please check out some of the other classic car videos on the old classic car channel uh, more news on other cars and this volvo 164 very soon hopefully so thanks for watching bye for now and thank you before and after.